let me take an opportunity to introduce myself. I am Nanda Kumar Pillai. I take care of uh, plywood sales for Century Plywoods India Limited for, for the entire South Southern region. Uh, today I have my colleague Mr. Kumresh who is here along with me to do a small presentation on plywood and the wood based panel product which is related to the construction industry. Plywood as such was introduced not as a product in plywood alone, it started as a tea chest product. Basically the industry was uh, focused on the northeastern states of India where the availability of timber was in plenty during the pre-independence era. Britishers who introduced plywood in India for tea chest purposes where the tea industry is focused in those areas on the hilly terrains. And finally, when the timber shortage started after the independence, it was converted into plywoods. Plywood as such is a product which is a wood substitute. Earlier wood was available in plenty across, but now uh, due to the global warming and all such issues, the timber is almost going rare and it is a rare resource for us. So, plywood was the first substitute and during the second world war period, when the timber became very short, Hitler introduced particle board. He was the father of particle board you can say because he introduced particle board into it. wooden shavings could be used for a, making a panel product. So, particle board was introduced. Further to that for decorative finishes, we have different timber species and we started manufacturing decorative veneers of late into the 80s and 90s. Then we have uh, craft paper which was converted into laminates uh, with melamine coating on top of it. So, these are the products which normally introduced. In particle boards again wood based uh, panel products you have uh, cement based particle board. Then we have phenol based particle board, melamine based particle board, urea based particle board. So, all these combinations has come into it. These are the forms of particle boards and wood based plywood industry. Plywood as such have many types are there which we will show uh, presentations on what are the different types of plywood available in India. And Century Plywood is one of the largest manufacturing uh, manufacturers of ply products in India. We have an entire range. We have a different purpose plywood starts with uh, uh, normal uh, plywood which is used for a commercial applications. Then we have a marine grade plywood which is used for fishing boat, uh, uh, fishing boat applications and then we have shuttering plywood which is used for centering applications. Then we have fire retardant plywood which is used for fire retardant applications. Then we have decorative plywood for decorative finishes. Then we have natural teak which could be used for again a decorative finish. Then we have a laminate which is used for again a decorative surface. Then we have uh, uh, particle boards, which is a future product and a, a MDF, medium density fiber board, which is again going to be a future product when plywood become a very tough resource available. Because if you see in uh, mainly timber is imported from the tropical forest of Burma and African countries which is going to be a rare resource because the European Union is resisting for cutting the timber in Burma and also in Australia they are hesitating. So, plywood is going to be a tough uh, available resource in future. So, MDF and particle board is going to be a future product along with plywood could be available because nothing cannot uh, could be stopped for it. So, plywood availability is a rare phenomenon for future, but definitely plywood will be there for the specialist applications. With that, I hand over the further presentation to Mr. Kumresh, who will do a product detail and a PowerPoint presentations on further the product wise details and will give you all the details required for this uh, about the plywood and plywood related products. Uh, good morning. I am Kumaresh, I am taking care of panel business for uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala for Century Plywoods India Limited. Uh, thanks for the opportunity given here. I am here to explain the, the product range. Uh, broadly, I can classify that into four. Uh, number one is plywood, number two is laminates, number two is uh, decorative veneers and number four is particle boards and MDF. 
So, what we will do is we will have a presentation on all the 4 products to know about the product and to get into the detail how it is manufactured. Uh, I will start with plywood, I will give you a brief about uh, how a plywood is manufactured and the various grades of uh, uh, plywoods. A plywood uh, when you see it is um, it is a, a product which is made of uh, assembled core veneers and face veneers of which is being extracted from timber. So, what, what do you see what is the difference between a timber and a plywood primarily is uh, timber is a, a homogeneous product of a single lumber and plywood is a product where it is manufactured from uh, various cores which is being extracted from a different kind of timber. Maybe the density of different type of timber will differ from a, a timber to product to product and it is uh, assembled in a criss cross manner which is uh, each layer is set in a right angles against the uh, next uh, layers and then it is hot pressed and enough curing is being given to the product. Uh, if you see what all the ingredients of a plywood. In plywood there are only two ingredients one is wood which is timber and one is glue. So, what makes the difference in terms of grades as far as ISI norms are concerned it comes into the, uh, the part where the glue is having a lot of importance. So, uh, uh, a plywood when it is manufactured has to go through a various process. Uh, it starts from seasoning of timber uh, which has to be done by uh, soaking it in water for a period of 60 days and then it starts with peeling of uh, timber for making layers which will be used for uh, plywood manufacturing. So, timber when it is soaked for 60 days why it is being done is to get the timber seasoned and then it is being cut uh, to the required sizes so that the peeling is done. The, the, the if you want to explain the exact way of peeling of a timber is the simple the in layman's language it is like uh, when you peel or when you sharpen a pencil in a cutter that is the same mechanism that is being used to peel veneers from plywood from uh, timber. Uh, so, the, the timber is soaked for 60 days and then it is taken out for uh, manufacturing purpose then it is being cut for the required sizes then the core veneers are being peeled from the timber using a, a semi cutter rotary cutter and then this uh, these cores will be dried to get the exact moisture content which is towards uh, to the extent of around 8 to 10 percent which depends on the product to product. And then all these cores will be glued and assembled on a, a right angle manner to each other and then it will be pre pressed. The, the purpose of pre press pre press is a uh, is a process where there is no uh, heat involved in it it is just pressure which will help the plywood to distribute uh, the moisture across the plywood in an equal manner which will tend uh, otherwise the plywood will tend to warp uh, when the moisture content is indifferent in each place of the plywoods. Uh, once it is uh, pre pressed then it will be loaded on to a hot press uh, short cycle hot press uh, model and then it will be pressed uh, where uh, uh, heat as well as pressure will be applied on the plywood which will give the final shape of the plywood. Uh, once the hot press is ready the mother product is uh, uh, ready after that the trimming and cutting will be done on the sides to get to, uh, uh, to resize the plywood to the required sizes and then the branding labeling the inspection happens on the plywood for dispatch. This is the, the plywood manufacturing as such the process which I have explained uh, I think we will be more clear when you see the presentations how it is done on a with, with uh, the help of a photographs. So, as I said plywood is an engineered lumber product manufactured with uh, timber veneers in right angle alternate right angles to each other and the other product that is there in plywood is adhesive. So, there, there is no third ingredient as far as plywood is concerned timber as well as adhesive. This will be the technical structure of uh, veneers which will be assembled in a plywood. The, the top most and the bottom most uh, uh, pieces are called face veneers, the alternate layers are called glue cores and the center layers will be called panel cores. Uh, glue will be uh, applied only to the glue cores and uh, alternate array, uh, structuring will be done while pressing. This will be the uh, thickness as per norms for uh, the various veneers face veneer will be a 0.33 mm to 1.5 mm, core, uh, cross core will be a 1.5 mm to a 3 mm uh, thickness, panel core veneer will be a 1.5 mm to 3 mm. Uh, I think I will explain it further when uh, it comes to the, uh, the required uh, thickness of each veneers, why there is a logic why we are following this thickness norms. So, these are the two types of uh, adhesive which we use which uh, determines the grade of plywood. One is a, a moisture resistant uh, grade which is called an MR grade 
and one is a PF grade or a BWR grade which is uh, uh, f uh, phenol formaldehyde uh, uh, resin. So, what happens uh, when you use an MR grade is uh, a melamine and a, phen a phenol formaldehyde is being bonded together which is a reversible reaction. So, it may, it may tend to uh, get again uh, uh, separate molecules when it is uh, exposed to moisture or water. So, uh, a melamine formaldehyde glue is used for a MR grade of plywoods which is a reversible reaction. In the case of a phenol formaldehyde rea reaction, phenol and formaldehyde gets into a two molecules will join into a molecule and it is an irre irreversible reaction. So, it uh, tends to be uh, stay with to together uh, for a lifetime. So, that is why it can withstand a boiling water uh, resistant as well as a uh, boiling uh, waterproof. So, the process of uh, uh, plywood making starts from uh, uh, timber, it is being sectioned, sectioned is called uh, uh, the, the cutting into cutting the timbers into required sizes and then peeling, veneer preparation and classification, it, uh, the veneers which are being peeled will be dried, it will be pre-assembled and then the glue will be spreaded, assembled in a criss cross manner and then it will be pre-pressed. After pre-pressing it is hot pressed, stacking sizing, inspection, sanding, preservative treatment, grading, labeling and dispatch. This is the entire process which is being followed to manufacture plywood. You can see some photographs now to uh, understand better. This is a timber which is being uh, uh, taken out from a pond. If you can see the, uh, the greens on the sides uh, which is almost there in the water for the last 60 days. It is being cut into the required sizes and this is a, a rotary peeler. Actually, this is a bigger size of uh, a normal cutter which we use to sharpen pencils. In this, the veneers are being peeled and this is a drying machine where the, the veneers are being dried to get to, uh, get to a level of uh, 8 percent uh, moisture level. It is being clipped. On these veneers, the glue is being spread. This is, this is a machine which is used to uh, spread glue and this uh, veneers are being uh, set on a crisscross manner that is at right angles to each other. In this one layer which you can see which is a glossy in nature is uh, uh, glue spreaded and the other one is dry. This is the process of uh, uh, pre-pressing. So, pre-pressing is being done to uh, uh, distribute moisture across the plywood in equal manner. So, what are the, the advantages of pre-pressing? A proper penetration of glue across all the cellulose of uh, the structure and uh, uniform distribution of moisture across the plywood and releases internal stress which will uh, get the product away from warpages. After pre-pressing the product is ready to do a hot press which is being uh, loaded into a hot press, a delayed press. Once the hot press is done, the resins get cured and the product is ready. This is the process where a plywood is being sized to the required sizes. Uh, this is a sanding machine where the face both the face of the plywood is being sanded. This is uh, very important because uh, for further applications on plywood let it be a laminate or let it be a, a decorative veneer it has to be stuck on uh, a plywood. So, uh, grip should be very good. So, sanding is a very important process as far as sanding uh, plywood is concerned. Uh, there is a manual inspection which happens. Uh, there is no automatic in, uh, inspection which can be done on a plywood. It is a very labor oriented uh, product. So, uh, this is done on a hammer test where the empty or uh, air pockets can be uh, audible when they blow the hammers on the plywood and then it is being labeled and ready for dispatch. So, when I said uh, 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 the thicknesses of veneer in that slide we talked about maximum thickness of uh, uh, 3 mm for a veneer, why is that so? In glue we add a, a chemical called uh, chlorophorophos, it is called CPP which will uh, fight against the borer and termite attacks. So, uh, the understanding that we have done from our R and D is that the glue will the glue will penetrate to an extent only up to 1.5 mm from a side when it is pre-pressed. By that time the glue will get dried up. 
So, the moment we have a chemical called CPP which reaches each and every cellulose of the timber, uh, the timber will become anti and borer, anti termite and anti borer. So, we wanted to make sure that uh, the glue reaches the each and every uh, molecule of the timber. So, that is why uh, we have a limitation of uh, cutting the, pro, uh, the core veneers at a maximum of 3 mm thickness. These are the various uh, grades of uh, plywood which we have. Century uh, ply BWR which uh, adds to the norms of BIS uh, IS norms 303. Commercial MR grade which is again comes under the category of 303. Block boards. Block boards are generally used for the purpose of shuttering, shuttering in the sense for uh, doors. Uh, which confirms to IS uh, 1659 and flush doors which will confirm to IS 2202. Concrete shuttering plywood which is used for uh, uh, shuttering purposes IS 4990 and concrete film phase which is also used for shuttering purposes and marine plywood. Marine plywood is used for a uh, 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 place where more of uh, water uh, uh, maybe water the, there is a lot of uh, moisture or water uh, intact is there. Uh, which is called as a BWP grade which confirms to IS 710. Uh, now, this is all about plywood. Now, I will talk about uh, laminates. When we say uh, laminate, it is basically made of papers. It is a assembly of a set of four set of four types of papers. I uh, will explain you the, the four types of paper which are being assembled. Uh, the front side of the laminate what we see is the decorative side is called the decorative paper. Then you have a tissue paper, then you have a, a, a craft paper uh, and you have a element paper that is to withstand the abrasions. So, these are the four type of paper which is being assembled together to uh, make the product. So, as far as laminates are concerned it is a purely a paper based product and we will get into the, uh, the uh, presentation. So, that you will get to know the exact how it is being prepared. Laminate is also uh, formerly called mica even more popularly it is known as mica. Technically uh, it is known as a HPL that is high pressure laminate. HPL consists of layers of paper impregnated with thermosetting resin. Uh, bonded by heat and pressure wherein usually the outer layer is colorful or designed which is the side which we call it as a decorative side. These are the four types of paper which uh, we were talking about. Uh, the back side of a uh, laminate paper laminate is craft paper which is at the end of this presentation which is the last line of this slide which is called a craft paper which is the back which forms the back side of the laminate and then comes a barrier paper which is bonded with a phenol formaldehyde. This uh, acts as a barrier as the name says this acts as a barrier between the craft paper and the decorative paper because craft paper is uh, brown in color and you may get the blotting of brown color in the decorative paper. To avoid that you have a paper in between which is called a barrier paper and then you have decorative paper which is the actual color of the paper which you see in various colors. Overlay is a tissue paper. This is uh, a melamin paper which has been impregnated with a melamin formaldehyde resin. What is the purpose of the overlay tissue is to increase the resistance of abrasion. The number of uh, cycles of abrasion will be in increased for and the life of the product is better because of this overlay tissue paper. Now, we will see how a mica is being prepared. It confirms to 2046 IS number. This is the uh, uh, preparation flow chart, uh, production flow chart for a laminate. The adhesive is being prepared for uh, which is used for base and craft paper impregnation. You have an uh, humidity controlled impregnated paper storage place which is air conditioned to store the paper and then it is moved to uh, making. It is being assembled in the, the same category what we talked about that is craft paper, uh, barrier paper, design paper and tissue paper and then it is pressed. Finishing is done, trimming to uh, and, uh, to size it to 8 by 4 sizes and then sanding is done. Sanding is again very important process as far as laminate is concerned. So, that while uh, for application purposes the bubbles or delamination does not happen and then it is inspection is done, marking and packing is done for dispatch. Uh, the photo where you see here is the plant where adhesive is being prepared. It is an in-house preparation as far as adhesives are concerned. This is the, uh, the impregnation machine. 
if you see on the left you can see a brown paper which is uh, uh, rolling through the machine it is the uh, it is called the craft paper the craft paper is being bonded with pf uh, uh, resin that is the process is called impregnation uh, the craft paper is bonded with a pf impregnation resin uh, this is the press after uh, assembling the, it is being used in this press to, uh, uh, to to form the product this is again a state of art machine which we use a steenman sanding machine which is which gives intact the same finish across the sheet from edge to edge and this process as i said is very important for uh, uh, to avoid the product from blisterings or delaminations a uniform sanding is extremely important for gluing the purpose of gluing is to avoid uh, uh, bubbles or delamination and then the product is being marked digitally on the batch number as well as uh, the the designs we have almost uh, 375 designs uh, different designs as far as laminates are concerned so each design is being mentioned on the back side of the sheet with their code numbers these are the various testing unlike uh, plywood where a manual testing is done in the case of laminates there are a lot of testing which will happen on the product the this test this particular test is on the raw material uh, the the virginity of the raw material as far as the papers are concerned we use virgin uh, uh, papers this is the pilot press where they uh, test the product this is again a, a process of testing this is the abrasion test uh, generally uh, normal decorative purpose laminates which stands almost 450 uh, cycles of abrasion in this machine you can see a, a roller uh, with a sandpaper uh, finish on the roller and a piece of uh, laminate is being kept on the roller and this machine is to test the abrasion level abrasion resistance of the product generally it first uh, surpasses uh, the is norms which is required at 350 cycles and as far as century ply pro laminates are concerned it surpasses 450 cycles this is a scratch resistant uh, testing machine which is uh, the laminate is being scratched with a nail these are the various finishes which we will be able to give as far as laminates are concerned uh, the finishes differs when we use a different plate while the, in the process of hot pressing when we use a textured plate the product becomes textured in the case of laminates we have a uh, industrial uh, grades uh, laminates uh, which can be uh, given uh, on request and it can withstand up to a level of 2000 uh, abrasion cycles uh, for industrial purposes a normal decorative paper will withstand 450 abrasion cycles and uh, industrial uh, paper will withstand 2000 cycles these are the general problems which occurs at the time of application we spoke about uh, plywood then we spoke about laminates uh, the third product category is uh, decorative veneers when we said uh, plywood is a, a full pr a product which is made exactly from uh, timber and nothing else when it is laminate it is made 100 percent from uh, paper and when it is again when it is veneers it is made purely from timber so what is the difference of a timber which is there in a laminate which is there in a plywood and what is the difference in timber which is lying in a, a veneer i said the example of uh, a sharpening of a pencil when we talked about the plywood the difference between laminate uh, between plywood and veneer is that when you uh, use a sharpener to peel the uh, or when you use a sharpener to sharp the pencil uh, the layer which you come out uh, is being used for uh, plywood manufacturing the same pencil when you use a knife to sharpen it uh, the bits of wood that is being used in the manufacturing of veneer so in layman's language this is the best way to explain the difference between the the wood layers of uh, plywood and uh, veneers so uh, veneer is being sliced from uh, a timber so we have a restrictions of group sizes because the grains across the timber will differ from a part of the timber to the other part of the timber so what we do is we soften the tissues by boiling the uh, timber in a boiler and then it is being sliced at a particular thickness so that all each and every veneer is numbered and each and every veneer is being kept in a book uh, bookmark uh, it's it's a sort of book matching because when you see the number of pages in a book it's in a serial category the same uh, manner of uh, mechanism is being used for making a veneer 
once it is sliced each uh, and every uh, bits of uh, veneers is being spliced together splicing is a process where it is called stitching of uh, veneers put together it is the process is called splicing and once it is uh, spliced this mat is being stuck to a 3 or 3.5 mm uh, plywood base and hot pressed the pro the final product is called decorative veneer we'll go to the presentation to see the the process A decorative veneer is an exotic and uh, decorative in nature. If you ask me how many uh, species of veneer we have, it is as good as saying how many species of timber we have. So, we have uh, almost 475 uh, species of uh, veneers available as of now. The commonly or the more uh, customer oriented design in this is always teak because everybody have a flair for teak always. It confirms to IS uh, uh, 1328. This is the log, the same log can be used for timber manufacturing also. The decorative timber blocks are being cut and it is sized to the required uh, sizes. The timbers which has been sliced to the required sizes is being uh, boiled in a boiler the purpose of boiling is to soften the tissues so that uh, the slicing becomes flawless. This is the machine which is being used to uh, slice the veneer. If you see uh, the worker is uh, standing with a, a, a piece of veneer which is being sliced from the timber. The sliced uh, veneers are being dried to get to, uh, to, to the required moisture levels. This is the process of uh, book matching, when I said uh, the same order of uh, timber, the same order of slicing has to be or, uh, continued here also to get the continuous grains as far as veneer is concerned. This is the process of splicing, if you can uh, concentrate in this photograph, you can see a, a fiber line which is running in between, uh, which is actually a stitching method which is being used to splice the veneers uh, together and this is a, uh, a very thin wire which will get melted away when it is hot pressed so that the final product does not have any uh, uh, left out pieces of this spliced uh, thread. This is the mat on which the decorative paper will be uh, struck. In between the, the mat and uh, the decorative paper, there is a tissue paper <coughs> or there is a barrier paper uh, as in the case of uh, laminates, which will avoid the blotting of uh, glue from the base to the decorative paper, because uh, the product is decorative in nature. And this is the final product, uh, the final layer which you see, uh, which is being uh, sliced and spliced together. It is being kept on a mat, on a mat they have a barrier paper and on a barrier paper they have a decorative sheet. All these three will be pressed together to make the product complete. This product is being pressed in a hot press. The inspection is done. When you have a timber, uh, it can be cut in two, two, in two types. Uh, one is called a flat cut and one is called a quarter cut. So, why there are two different cuts being followed? The grains in a timber uh, depends on the, the way you, uh, the grains in a veneer depends on the way you cut a timber. When you do a flat cut, you get a flowery design and when you do a, a straight cut or a quarter cut, you do, you get a uh, straight line designs. The, the, the logic behind this is that if you can see in this photo, uh, the photo number, the figure A is uh, is the way, way when we cut a timber in flat cut process the the sides are taken out and then uh, the timber is made into two parts and it is being sliced from one end in the case of where you get a flurry cut in the case of uh, quarter 2 which is showed in figure b uh, the timber is sized into four parts and the center part is also being taken out to avoid the uh, the, the figured uh, design when you slice such a timber you will get straight lines
So a, a similar species or a same timber in a which belongs to a same species can be given either in a flowery design or can be given in a straight line design based on the cut we perform. This is how you get a, a, a flowery design. This is a, a cross section of a timber which is shown which has three lines. So, that means which is being cut into uh, two parts. The second uh, photo shows the, the half part of the timber and third shows uh, the, the one layer of slice which will show how uh, the, the figured nature will get into the veneer. In the case of second, if you see that is a quarter cut plywood piece or a timber piece and from that timber when you do a slicing, the small blue line here in the photo shows the blade which is used for slicing. Uh, so, in the second uh, photo when you do a quarter cut uh, of slicing of uh, timber, you get straight lines. So, the tim same timber can be used either for a flurry when you do a flat cut and you can use it for a uh, straight line when you use it as a uh, quarter cut. So, what are all the types of uh, veneer? One is a natural veneer which is directly uh, sliced from the timbers, one is a dyed veneer. <coughs> dyed veneer is also natural in uh, nature, it is being darkened with the use of dyes. A burl, burl is nothing but a cancer uh, which you see in a tree, uh, the cancer portion of a tree is being sliced to make veneers which is called burl and a recon in nature uh, which is reconstituted veneer. A recon uh, veneer is a product where uh, the layers or the spliced uh, um, uh, veneer sheets are being reconstituted to a timber uh, design and that is again sliced to make the veneer. So, what is special about uh, century ply veneers? Maybe we are the only manufacturer who supply a BWR grade uh, decorative veneer in uh, India. This is because of the, the captive uh, resin plant which we have. It comes as a pre finished surface on the back, it does not require further sanding which will save labor as well as cost. And GLP is the uh, treatment which we use it for plywood. The same uh, technology is being used to, uh, in the veneer also to make the product uh, termite and borer proof. It is in this process uh, that is GLP process where we use uh, chemical which I talked about during the plywood presentation called CPP chlorophorophos which makes the product termite and borer proof. This is the procedure for uh, uh, of polishing a veneer. Generally, the, the it is pre sanded, so there is no further sanding required, it is wiped clean, a sealant or a coat of sealant is applied on the surface and then a smoothening of the surface is done with a sanding. Then the required polish, let it be a polyurethane or a lacquer or a melamine or a gala polish is being applied to the veneer to get the final touch. Now, we spoke about uh, three products, plywoods, uh, laminates, decorative veneers. And the fourth product as uh, my uh, senior said uh, is a future product is the pre laminated particle boards and MDF boards. So, when the name says it is a pre laminated particle board, uh, it is a, a mixture of laminate as well as uh, wood. So, what is as the name says what, what you understand from, a, from the word particle board is the, the it is part it is uh, the timber is being crushed into pieces, it is mixed with glue and it is being pressed to the required thickness is called particle board. Uh, the same timber when it is the finer uh, is crushed into finer dust and that is mixed with glue and uh, pressed to the required thickness is called an MDF which is or otherwise called as a medium density fiber boards. I will go to the presentation of prelam and MDF to explain further how it is manufactured. A particle board is a sheet manufactured from small particle of wood or similar. Uh, uh, lignose uh, cellulosic material blended with uh, resin and then it is being uh, pressed to the due required sizes. In this case any sort of timber can be used, it can be a, a wasted uh, timber from a sawmill or it can be uh, the cut out pieces of other timbers or trees. The density of the board uh, can be increased 
by increasing the number of uh, particle or by uh, applying more pressure at the time of production. A low density board uh, will, which will be uh, to the extent of 400 kgs per cubic meter and a high density particle board will be to the extent of a 900 kgs per cubic meter. This is extensively being used for uh, aluminum partitions and for fabrication purposes. The process which is being followed to manufacture uh, uh, particle board is similar to that of uh, laminate uh, which we have seen. These are the three types of uh, particle board uh, which we can see. One is a single layered uh, homogeneous board where the size of the particles remain same across the board, across the thickness of the board. Then there is a three layer uh, boards when uh, in which you will see a bigger particle at the center and when you do a cross section of the particle board, when you can see a bigger particle of uh, wood parts at the center of the board and finer parts at the sides on both the sides of the board, which is called a three uh, layer board, which is called the top and bottom will be having a finer particles and the middle part will be having a bigger particle board, which will for, uh, increase the, the fineness of the product, which will increase the smoothness and the strength of the product. The other uh, one is called a graduated or graded boards which will starts from the one side will start from the small finest particle and the other end will end up at the biggest particle. So, there are three uh, types of boards one is a homogeneous product one is a three layered boards and the other one is a gradually or a graduated board which increases from smallest fine uh, wood particles to the biggest ones. So, what is a laminated particle board we spoke about a particle board which is being manufactured which is called the motherboard. So, when it is called a laminated uh, or a pre laminated particle board is when a uh, a decorative paper is being uh, uh, pressed on the side on both the sides of the particle board it is called as a pre laminated particle board. The moment when we talk about lamination we talk about colors uh, we will be able to supply uh, 475 shades of uh, laminates uh, either as a laminate sheet or on uh, as a pre laminated particle board. So, what are the advantages or why it is considered to be a future product? It simplifies the operation, it is cost uh, uh, effective and it is easy to work for as far as the labor is concerned. This is comparatively a less uh, used product as of now, a veneered particle board. The difference is that the motherboard remains same instead of a laminate paper we are using a spliced veneer uh, sheet on the top of a particle board which is called a veneered uh, particle board. These are the grades which we have we have a, a exterior grade which is which should be a BWR so that it is boiling water resistant and uh, a grade 2 which is an interior grade which is an MR which is called a moisture resistant. As we discussed in uh, plywood BWR uh, grade of uh, material will be using phenol formaldehyde glue and MR or moisture resistance grade of products will be using melamin formaldehyde glue. The glue is what which makes the difference. This is the process of lamination the laminated uh, sheet is being done on a short cycle press the impregnated paper uh, the same process is being followed the of what we saw in laminates. These are the various uh, mix and match of products which we will be able to supply. One is a laminated particle board, the other one is a laminated MDF boards, then you have a veneered uh, decorative boards, then OSW which is called a balancer boards, one side balancer that is a balancer laminate which is being struck on one side. Then you have a flexo mica which is generally used for a post forming purpose. A laminate uh, cannot be used for heating purposes. Uh, as far as a flexo mica can be used for a uh, heating purposes which can be bent if applied heat. These are the IAS specifications a prelam uh, MDF confirms to IS uh, 14587 a prelam uh, particle board confirms to uh, IS 12283 uh, a plain MDF confirms to 12406 a plain particle board uh, confirms to IS 3087 and a veneered particle board confirms to IS 3097. 
so this is the snapshot of uh, the all the the four products which we uh, saw now uh, plywoods laminates decorative veneers and uh, particle boards as well as mdf boards so this will cover the entire range of uh, uh, products as far as a company is concerned thanks for the opportunity for us we had uh, discussed about the the products we had seen the uh, photographs and the process how a product is being made i'll show you some samples uh, by which you will be able to understand the product better uh, this is the uh, cross section of a plywood when we spoke about plywood we spoke about the different layers in a plywood if you can see in this video there it is being cut on a layer to layer basis so the front and back is called a, a face veneer and then you have panel cores then you have glue cores and it is being assembled and pre pressed and hot pressed to make the product so i think by seeing this product uh, or by seeing the layer wise product you will be able to understand the product better now i'll show you the different grades of uh, plywood which we spoke about in the presentation a architect ply which uh, is a bwp grade which comes with a lifetime guarantee this is uh, bonded with uh, bwp uh, when i say bwp it is boiling water proof and it is bonded with phenol formal dehyde resin pf resin which as i said it is a irreversible reaction uh, resin uh, this is marine uh, grade plywoods it also conforms to is 710 uh, as far as grade is concerned it is bwp uh, the resin used here is phenol formal dehyde it can withstand uh, uh, boiling up to 72 hours Uh, also i wanted to add this is a product which can be used for uh, even marine purposes in the case of boat building this is the generally uh, or widely uh, used uh, product which conforms to is uh, 303 in layman's language it is called uh, bwr uh, which uh, the expansion says boiling water resistant Uh, the phenol uh, the glue that is being used in this product is phenol formal dehyde again this comes with a 7 year guarantee and uh, 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 a pf when i say pf resin it is again a irreversible reaction resin so it can withstand uh, boiling water up to 8 hours of uh, boiling for 4 uh, cycles this is a film face uh, plywood uh, which i spoke about in the presentation for shuttering purposes this comes in a 12 mm thickness uh, uh it's a single uh, thickness product uh, this be this product is being used for shuttering purposes uh this is the sample of a bwp door when i say bwp it is boiling water proof bwp door this is also called as flush doors which are being used for uh, doors uh, primarily for only for doors and shutters this is a more commercially uh, used uh, material uh, mr grade material commercially it is uh, price wise also it is comparatively cheaper to the other uh, uh, grade of uh, products it conforms to is 303 the resin here used will be mf that is uh, melamine formaldehyde it can withstand only moisture it cannot withstand boiling water that is why it is called uh, moisture resistance Uh, when i say uh, um, mf resin it is called a melamine formaldehyde res uh, resin which tends to reverse the reaction once it is exposed to water or boiling water so it can withstand only moisture i wanted to introduce one more product which is uh, conforming to uh, even emission norms if you see uh, even emission is uh, now nowadays uh, every building is being uh, rated in green norms uh, green building concept now even is a very futuristic product which we have uh, uh, introduced even uh, confirms even even says uh, the the evaporation of phenol formaldehyde from the product should not be more than 0.1 ppm that is particle per million it adheres to even norms in uh, in other countries or in developed countries uh, there is there are more stricter norms called e0 which says only 0.07 ppm should be the uh, evaporation from your product so phenol formaldehyde phenol formaldehyde is a, a product which uh, in this product has been being locked with an additive to make sure that the evaporation does not happen from the product so this is a very futuristic product and we were maybe we are the first company to launch uh, 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 such a product in the country 
we spoke about uh, uh, plywoods, then we spoke about uh, laminates. Uh, this is the uh, laminate which you see, this is the, the design side of the laminate. Uh, this is a sample where both the sides are being designed, but actually the sample will look like the one side is being the design paper on the back you have the, the craft paper and then the barrier paper to avoid uh, uh, glue getting into the design paper and then the design paper. On the design paper you have a tissue paper, tissue paper make sure that the, the product is abrasion resistant. Then we spoke about veneers, uh, a veneer generally comes in a, a 4 mm thickness uh, sheet. This is uh, the product which will look like, this is a sheet of uh, a timber or we can say the spliced uh, veneer of uh, burl, burl, uh, burl part of a timber. On the back side is nothing but a plywood, a 3.5 uh, mm plywood, uh, from the side it will look like this. As we talked about in the production, uh, a plywood base is being used and then you have a barrier paper and then the design paper which makes the product, uh, uh, which makes uh, the barrier paper avoids the blotting of glue from the base to the design paper. Uh, the same is the uh, case in the case of a plywood, it is being struck with a teak uh, spliced veneer on the one side of the plywood. This is general tolumum plywood, a teak veneer is being on pasted on one side of the plywood. In this case, the same tolumum plywood is being struck with a teak of a veneer of a teak on both the sides. It is called a BST, uh, both side teak. So, both the sides of the product is being struck with a teak. Then we spoke about at the end, we spoke about particle boards as well as uh, laminated particle boards and MDF. This is uh, a laminated particle board. Why we call it as a laminated particle board is because it is being laminated with a, a laminate paper on both the sides and why it is called a particle board is because it is being manufactured with particles of wood as you see in the, uh, in the construction you can see the small particles of being uh, wood is being crushed mixed with resin and uh, pressed to the size we want. The same is a construction in the case of an MDF also, the only thing is the dust is being uh, uh, the, the timber is being crushed into much more finer, uh, finer dust and then it is mixed with glue and uh, pressed to the size the, that is being required. It is called a MDF sheet, MDF is uh, nothing but a medium density fiber, technically it is known as an MDF. This covers all the range of products that we have, thank you. I would like to first thank uh, Mr. Nandukumar and Mr. Kumaresh of Century Plight for giving us a very good presentation of the different products that are there with Century Ply and the, those are that are there in the Indian market. We have a few questions that we would like to uh, pose. I uh, will start. Uh, one of the things that is being said about MDF is that it is more eco-friendly, it is better for the environment and even when we are talking about LEED certification, it is uh, preferred over plywood. Can you please tell us what are the benefits of using MDF in terms of the environment friendliness? called as medium density fiber board is made of wood pulp. The basic MDF as you generally say medium density fiber board is made of wood pulp. The raw material requirement can be eucalyptus, it can be acacia which is grown very fast and the cutting period could be 5 years, 10 years, it is normally called a plantation timber which confirms to uh, green building certifications, lead points of uh, 2 or 4 because uh, lead points are based on uh, different uh, rules like uh, proximity to the site uh, that is less transportation cost, again uh, less emission of carbon. Uh, second thing recycled timber. Uh, the adhesive used into it, uh, normally urea formaldehyde is one adhesive which is not acceptable for a green building certification. Uh, so MDF is widely accepted because you need not cut a tree for manufacturing of MDF and the timber used is a recycled timber which can be grown very fast. That is why it is widely accepted, not accepted in India because it has not proved the a uh, uh, span, lifespan of that particular product because normally in European countries there is a tendency of changing the furnitures every 6 years or 7 years, whereas in India once we use it, we use it for as a lifetime applications. 
So the culture definitely has to come into India in future. So it will take uh, some more time to adapt to that situation which is uh, coming slowly into India, but still uh, we cannot say the consumption of wood based panel products of MDF is comparatively 4 to 5 percent on of our requirements. Yes, uh, uh, I have a question on you mentioned something like yes, a sorry. reversible reaction and irreversible reaction uh, and can you please give some more insight into where we should uh, you know what is the advantages of or disadvantages of actually the irreversible reaction. Uh, so, when I uh, said reversible and irreversible, uh, I had explained to understand uh, for a layman uh, how the product construction will look like. The reversible and irreversible reaction is being talked about is on the resin, not on the plywood. So, the resin is manufactured either with a phenol formaldehyde or with a melamine formaldehyde. A phenol formaldehyde is a resin. Uh, made up of for example, I will explain it as two molecules, one is a molecule of phenol and one is a molecule of formaldehyde. It is being uh, mixed together to make a, a molecule called PF which is called a phenol formaldehyde which is once it is uh, converted into a P and a F converts into a PF, it is not again not, it is not re reversible. So, what happens when it is being exposed to water, it will never get back to into its old model of phenol and formaldehyde separately. The moment it becomes phenol and formaldehyde separations, it is no more no more called as a glue. So what happens? The, it is being the resin is being used to uh, stick the layers of plywood. The moment phenol or formaldehyde evaporates, and when only phenol is left behind, it is no more called a glue. So the result of that is delamination of layers from a plywood. So this happens in the case of MF, melamine and formaldehyde. A molecule of melamine and a molecule of uh, formaldehyde joins together to form a MF molecule which is actually reversible. When it is exposed to water, the formaldehyde evaporates slowly and only melamine is left alone. When melamine is alone, it is cannot be called as a resin. So, you may find uh, the, the possibilities of delamination in a plywood. So, a MF used plywood is being used for a commercial purposes where there is no uh, exposure, of, uh, exposure to water and a BWR grade which uses a PF resin. Uh, can be used uh, to the places where there is where, where the product can be exposed to moisture or water maybe in the form of ac ducts where moisture content will be high where in the case of kitchens where uh, usage of water is high so those are the applications where you can use a bwr grade where pf resin is being used sir i have a question when you are discussing about the processing of plywood you said about the hot pressing technique uh, when we are applying the hot uh, means heat to the uh, plywood, will it affect the moisture content of the uh, ply or uh, will it affect the glue how because of the heat applied? Can you explain about it? Uh, the purpose of hot press is to make the glue fortified. We have a we spoke about a process called pre press before hot press. The purpose of hot press is to make the glue penetrate into each level or each layers of plywood. The moment it is pre pressed, we can make sure the glue is. Uh, spread across the plywood. Now, we need to fortify the glue that means we need to dry the glue as well as we need to uh, make the construction solid of the plywood. Already the veneer are cured, uh, veneer is already cured for a 8 percent uh, moisture content. So, the moisture content in the plywood will be 8 percent. The only thing is before pre-pressing the moisture content may not be equally distributed across the plywood. So, in the process of pre-pressing the moisture content of 8 percent will be equally distributed which makes the plywood uh, warp free otherwise it will warp and it also helps in uh, penetrating may the glue penetrating to across all the levels of veneers and when it is hot pressed the penetrated glue will get solidified or fortified and the construction becomes strong and moisture content will remain the same. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come here and for your excellent expl explanations and also we had the pleasure of seeing some of the samples which made us understand better your products. Thank you once again. Thanks a lot for the opportunity given to us here. I think this will uh, help uh, students uh, learn better about the product. We also I personally thank <coughs> for giving us this opportunity to present in IIT which is a pioneer institute in India. So, we take it as a privilege and a honor to present in front of you all. Thank you very much.